Alright, you made it to the final part of these mini tutorials. I'm Christo with 9 to 3 animation and in this scene we've got Dylan Sissons walking teapot with our own materials. So here we'll introduce some color into the hatching layers via the stylized control patterns from within each shader. And then finally we'll layer our stylized lines back on top with a few final touches. First, let's take a moment to inspect the menu choices we have under Hatch Color From. In addition to the default color swatch, we also have three different AOVs we could use as color sources as well as a texture file. I'll go with the NPR will be the AOV. And most of the hatching seems to have just disappeared. Uh, that's because the NPR will be the AOV outputs the input RGB signal of the stylized control patterns. So currently that's just the same signal as our, uh, as our albedo. However, we could do an HSL adjustment on this one. So if I just drop down a PXR HSL, and begin decreasing the luminance, we'll see the changes taking effect in the NPR will be the AOV. So I'll keep these settings and just copy this over to the other materials. Ok, let's look at our visualizer now and see how the hatching color changes with a few more HSL tweaks. Let's keep it like this and for the hatching light mask filter I'll just introduce some tint directly into the hatch color swatch. Let's add our lines display filters back on top of the hatching and see if we can do some final touches. So now that we have the hatching contribution, our lines don't stand out enough anymore. Let's change their colors to something um, a bit darker and more saturated. Ok, I like the color contrast that these values seem to give us. Finally, we can't go without a quick whiteout layer. Let's just duplicate the curvature lines display filter and set the line color to white. Now let's add it to the resorb. And everything turns white. Let's reuse that custom direct diffuse AOV into the light signal AOV string field. Now change signal energy from to albedo AOV and let's uh, toggle the light mask switch on. And there we go, we get a whiteout layer in the directly illuminated areas. I'll increase the value of the line color up to 2. Before we go, I want to rotate the two distant lights we have uh, just a bit to show you how the filters will update in the IPR. Alright, so I hope that shows you just how much procedural fun you can have with RenderMan stylized looks once you start layering those display filters. Uh, let's render out the sequence and take a look. Alright, here it is. 
And uh, that concludes our imagination based rendering mini tutorials on random and stylized looks with Dylan Sisson's walking teapot. Thanks and stay tuned for more in depth stylized rendering. Cheers!